I'm hoping this thing has enough structural integrity so that I can just like pull the whole thing out. Look at that. Voila. Hey everyone, I'm Dave and today we're cooking the world's best meatloaf. Well, at least according to Google, as always on this channel, I Google search the world's best recipes. We cook them, we try them out, I teach you how to cook them. And if they're good, then hopefully you go cook them. I uh, definitely had some really great successes in the past. Check out my nacho recipe. That was probably the best nachos I've ever had. Our quesadillas are super popular. So check out some of the other videos. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna see more of this. But today we're doing meatloaf. And when I Google world's best meatloaf, I actually get a back and forth between two recipes. Uh, but the one that pulled up for me now is Natasha's Kitchen. And it's meatloaf recipe with the best glaze, which sounds pretty good to me. I like a good meatloaf, especially with a glaze. Definitely had some dry meatloafs in the past, so it's always good to have some, uh, some sort of glaze or sauce or something like that to go with your meatloaf in case it does come out a little dry. So first let's go through our ingredient list and then we'll get to cooking. So for the actual meatloaf, we need two pounds of ground beef. I've got like two and a quarter pounds just because that's how they were selling it. A medium onion. We're gonna need three garlic cloves, two eggs. I got the whole pack of eggs here. We are going to need three tablespoons of ketchup, three tablespoons of freshly chopped parsley, which is kind of pointless. It doesn't really have a flavor, in my opinion. Three quarter cups of panko breadcrumbs, a third cup of milk. Apparently we went with a fancy Horizon brand this time. Salt, Italian seasoning, paprika, and pepper. That's kind of the main meatloaf setup. All that is what goes in the meatloaf, and then we've got the glaze. And in the glaze, we do a bunch of ketchup, which makes sense. White vinegar, which is also used to clean urine out of carpets. <laughs> I like to always bring my cooking recipes down to their basis form. Brown sugar, garlic powder and onion powder, a staple in any recipe, and of course, some more salt and pepper. And that's gonna be our glaze. So a bunch of stuff going on here. Uh, hopefully it's not too hard of a recipe. Hopefully it's easy to follow along. We're gonna try to cook it and see how it goes. So the first step is to line a nine by five loaf pan with parchment paper, which I never have, uh, and preheat the oven to 375. Since I never have that, we'll have to use some sort of like butter or something uh, because I always forget to buy the parchment paper. Let me see if I have a loaf pan even. Okay, so that took a minute. I found a loaf, a loaf pan. Uh, I didn't know I had one, but it's not quite the right size. Four and a half by nine, and this says five by nine, but I think it's probably pretty much the same thing. Four and a half, first five, that's gotta be close enough. Uh, and then we gotta preheat our oven to 375, which I've already done. Now this actually uh, looks pretty simple. It says in a large bowl, add all the ingredients and mix well. So that's simple enough, if I can find a large bowl. So here's our large bowl, and we're gonna add the beef first. Now, like I said, I have a little more than two pounds and I wanna make sure I do close to two because my pan is small and this is 1.27. So this is one and a quarter pound. We'll add that first. And since we only need three quarters of a pound and this contains one and a quarter again, we'll do two thirds. And that's the math of the day, guys. The math of the day with Dave. I like to always provide you with a little math to pretend I have mathematic skills. Now that we've got that in there, we need to add, hold on, let me get there. There's like a bunch of ads before I find out what to add. <laughs> I'm such a cheese ball. Okay, we've got the meatloaf. So next is a medium onion, 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 finely chopped. So we gotta chop that. So I forgot, we probably should have done that first. All right, so we take our onion and we're gonna chop it. All right, so what we're gonna do is I guess we'll just cut it in half first and then we will uh, cut the ends off. And uh, my knife work, as always, is terrible. I like to remind you on this channel that I am not a professional cook. I'm just someone who cooks for his family. And this is kind of my process. So for example, we had company come over two nights ago and Tina, my wife, said, what should we make? And I said, well, I can make chicken nuggets. You know, like Chick-fil-A style chicken nuggets, like the small ones, stuff like that. And she's like, okay, what do you need? And so I went to Google, just like I did today. And I said, Chick-fil-A chicken nugget recipe. <laughs> And that's how I got my recipe. And then I just simply follow it exactly like I'm doing here. Uh, I have a friend in Virginia and he's come and stayed with me several times. And I told him about my channel and he checked it out. And he called me after watching a video. He's like, Dave, that is exactly what it feels like to cook with you in your house because he's cooked with me many times. And so if you ever wanted to know exactly what it's like to cook in my house, this is it. Kind of uh, scatterbrained all over the place, making a mess. But at the end of the day, the food usually comes out pretty tasty. Uh, and I've had a few of you comment in the comments that you cook in a similar fashion, disorganized, uh, kind of all over the place, but the food comes out good and safe to eat and delicious and better than most restaurants, I'll be honest. 
but that's, I'm really a snob when it comes to restaurants just because pretty much anything they cook, you can cook at home better. Uh, but it is nice to not have to think. You just go to a restaurant and you pick any of like 5,000 different things. There's a lot of stuff at restaurants and uh, they cook it good enough generally. And there's a freedom to that, especially if you have three kids like I do and they all want something different. You know, you can go to a restaurant and they can all cook. You know, I can have ribs while they have chicken tenders and you know, Tina has some sort of a bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwich or something like that. Everyone kind of picks their own thing. Everyone gets what they want and you don't have to do any work. You don't have to do any cleanup and you don't even have to make any cooking videos. <laughs> Although you don't really have to do that anyways. You know, I was watching a guy who like reviews uh, chefs on TikTok and basically makes fun of them and their cooking skills. And I'm, I feel like if he ever makes fun of me, I'll, I'll really have made it. I think it's like chef reviews or something. He's super sarcastic and funny, but uh, you know, one day he'll, he'll review me. But the problem is I don't pretend like I'm a great cook. I just am someone who cooks and uh, brings you along for the ride. So remember today we're making the world's best meatloaf. Our onions are chopped and diced. So we're gonna add them into this bowl with our ground beef now. Kind of how this is gonna go. We're gonna add all the ingredients in with this ground beef. And the next thing we're adding is eggs. Okay, so we got our ground beef here and we're gonna do two eggs. And should we do them right into the bowl? A lot of times I get shells, but I'm feeling confident today. And I don't think I got any, but my eyes are watering from this onion. So who knows? All right, so we got the eggs in there. And up next, we need two minced cloves of garlic. And I did get a head of, head of garlic? That's what they call it, right? So we'll just grab two cloves out of there. One and, I'm super strong guys, I can do this. Two, eh, three. Three cloves of garlic like that. Do you also do what I do and just like always throw in an extra clove of garlic because there's never really enough garlic? That's definitely a, a bad habit I have. Is it a bad habit or a good habit? I don't know. So we're just gonna squish down the garlic a little so we can take the, the shell off of it, the peel off of it, and then we'll dice that up and put it in with the ground beef. Actually, I do think I have four cloves. It technically calls for three, so I should stop at three, right? That's three cloves right there. So we'll just use those three. Uh, normally I probably would have just done the fourth, but we're trying to follow this recipe exactly and see if it really is the world's best meatloaf recipe. Uh, but come on, it'd be better if I put more garlic. Let's be real. That's an atrocious way to <laughs> mince garlic, but I don't care. Don't judge me. I mince garlic how I want to mince garlic. Okay, so that's all good. Now we're going to add that to the bowl full of meat, just like before. So you can see this coming together, turning into a meatloaf, kind of, sort of. It's definitely not a loaf yet, but it's definitely meat with stuff. All right, what's our next ingredient? Next ingredient is gonna be three tablespoons of fresh parsley. So I have some fresh parsley here. Let me rinse it off really quick, and then we'll chop up three tablespoons. That should be more than enough right there. So let's just chop it up. Uh, I would say we'd want it fairly fine because you don't want giant leaves in your, in your bites of meatloaf, right? This is probably too much too. This looks like more than three tablespoons. Straight up smells like Christmas up in here. That's parsley to me. It always reminds me of like a Christmas wreath. I remember when I was a kid, we would uh, sell Christmas wreaths. I feel like we made them, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm misremembering. I'll have to call my mom and see if she remembers the Christmas wreaths that I used to sell for Boy Scouts. There we go, that's pretty finely chopped. Let's just give it one more go and get our tablespoon measurement. So with this, we'll do one. One tablespoon, two tablespoons, and just trust me, I'm putting it into that same bowl with the beef. I'll show you in a second. Three tablespoons. Okay, so let's set this aside. I've had a lot of comments complaining that I don't clean up as I go. So I'm trying to be more cognizant of that. Like my big word, word of the day. All right, we're back with our food. So we got our parsley in there, we got garlic, we got onions, we got eggs. Up next, we're gonna add three tablespoons of ketchup. I'm not convinced I've ever made a meatloaf before. Maybe I have one, two, maybe with like those meal kits, three. You know, like uh, HelloFresh, Every Plate, Green Chef, all those. Like I've, they've probably sent me a meatloaf recipe that I've cooked at some point in the past. All right, up next we need three quarters cup of panko breadcrumbs. All right, I got a half a cup and a quarter cup. And so we'll just open up these breadcrumbs and add them in. You guys ever watch those cooking shows on TV where they're like competing? They have a certain amount of time to use these specific ingredients and make this crazy recipe. I don't think I'd like that, I'll be honest. So there's a quarter and that was a little bit low. So I'm gonna do like a little bit more of a heaping uh, half so that we can make sure we got enough breadcrumbs in there. There we go. And there you go. We got our three quarter cups of panko breadcrumb. Up next, we need to add a third a cup of milk. I'm saying a third a cup of milk. I should probably say a third of a cup of milk, right? Not a third a cup. Anyways, 
There's our one thirds cup. And this is technically the measuring spoon you'd use for a dry ingredient, but I'm using it for a wet ingredient, which is very naughty. Make sure you comment down below about how I'm using the wrong tool for the job. Up next, we need a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half of salt. So I've got my one teaspoon here. I've got this fancy thing that's supposed to like go into the salt shaker, but it doesn't really work. So I'll just pour it like always. Teaspoon and a half a teaspoon. Sorry if you can't see this. You'll just have to trust me that I did a teaspoon and a half and I'm not sneakily making an ultra recipe that's even better than the world's best. And then there's this horrible thing. This is a uh, Italian herb and season grinder. I need Italian herbs and seasonings, but I don't have an already ground one, so I have to grind this myself, uh, which is not fun. And so I'm just gonna do that into this. It's just a pain, really. I'm just gonna sit here and grind this for three hours. <laughs> it's not really three hours, but I need a teaspoon and a half. So if you have just pre-ground Italian seasoning, you could just do your teaspoon and a half, put it in there and you're good to go. But again, I don't have that, so I'm doing it the hard way. Here's my one teaspoon. There we go, filled it up pretty good. And a half, I think I'm gonna need to grind a little bit more for the half. Just a scotch. It's not that bad, it just takes a couple extra minutes. Ugh. A little bit more. You know, we should probably do some more Christmassy recipes as Christmas nears, but we've still got some time before Christmas comes. There's your half. So a teaspoon and a half of Italian seasoning. That stuff smells delicious. And then a quarter teaspoon of ground pepper and a half a teaspoon of paprika. And then that's all the stuff that goes in the actual meat of this recipe. There's still more steps. So there's your paprika, half a teaspoon. And then we want a quarter teaspoon, so half of that, of pepper. And I'll probably just, you know, pepper is always to taste. So I'll just do like a little less than a half right there and mix that in. Okay, so we're gonna mix this up in a minute. It's gonna be gross and cold and horrible. But first we're gonna grease this with some butter. Okay, so I cleaned up a little and I went ahead and buttered my dish. You're really not supposed to use butter. You're supposed to use panko bread, or not panko bread parchment paper, but I didn't have any parchment paper. So now we're gonna mix this together. Uh, you can use a fork or something, but generally speaking, um, I think it's probably just easier to use the ultimate mixing tool, my very clean hands that I just washed. You just can do so much with these amazing fingers you have that it's kind of crazy to try to use a fork to get this sort of thing mixed in. And whenever I've made meatloafs, I've always just used my, or not meatloafs, um, meatballs. I just use my hands. They just are very, very useful for that. So we wanna get it really mixed in so that every single bite has all the flavor in it. And that's kind of what I'm focused on now is just get it all mixed up. Now it also says that once I'm done with this, I'm gonna add this to the pan, which makes sense. <laughs> I've got the pan all prepped and ready to go. So we'll add this to the pan next. All right, so I'd say this is pretty well mixed up and integrated. And so we're probably ready to go ahead and put it into our pan, which is right here. So let's go ahead and do that. And hopefully it fits because my pan's a little bit smaller than the recipe called for. Wow, this is really filling it up, huh? All right, so it says to press it down firmly. Does it say firmly or gently? It says gently press down and shaped, shape evenly like so. So I'd say that's pretty well shaped into a loaf of meat. I mean, I kind of wish it was banana bread, but maybe next time, right guys? Comment down below what you want me to cook next time we do a video. All right, there's our giant loaf of meat. Let me clean my hands. All right, so now that we've got the meatloaf all ready to go, we're gonna put it into the oven at 375 degrees for 40 minutes. I'm gonna clean up and then we'll be back in a second to make the glaze, which is gonna go on top of it. We're incredibly close to finding out if this is really the world's best meatloaf. All right guys, while that meatloaf cooks for 40 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and make our glaze that's gonna go on top of it. So you cook the meatloaf for 40, you take it out, you put this glaze over it, and then you put it back in the oven for another, how long, 20 minutes or so? 15 to 20 minutes or until the internal temperature hits 160 degrees. So all that said, let's make the glaze. I'll probably put it in the fridge while this meatloaf cooks because it's gonna be quick to make it. Okay, so first thing we need is three quarters cups of ketchup. So I've got my cup here and I'm just gonna fill this puppy up all the way to the three quarter mark. That's good, good wrist exercise to uh, squeeze this much ketchup out at once. This is basically what my daughter puts on her French fries, <laughs> this much. All right, we've got three quarter cups right there and we'll put it into our bowl. I'm gonna have to get like a spatula to get it all in there. All right, so let's get all that ketchup in there so we don't, you know, leave any stuck in the cup. Then the measuring would be kind of pointless. 
Up next, we need a teaspoon and a half of white vinegar, which I got here. It's kind of made a sizzle when I opened it. That's interesting. And I've got my teaspoon here. I'm going to do it over this um, glass measurer so that if it spills out, it goes right into there. There's a teaspoon and a half of white vinegar. And then we need two and a half tablespoons of brown sugar. I have light brown sugar. I don't think it really matters. Uh, someone told me that the darkness is only representative of how much molasses is in it. I guess it's just sugar and molasses. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's what someone told me. So I have this really cool measuring cup I found at a yard sale that are measuring spoon. That's actually two tablespoons. So there's two tablespoons and then I've got a half tablespoon measure. So that's kind of my quick way. But if you only have a one tablespoon, you just do two of those and then the half one. Put that in there. Pour my brown sugar into a, a Ziploc bag so it doesn't get all crunchy. You know what I mean, Vern? And then we want to do a teaspoon of garlic powder, which I have right here. I know I have a teaspoon measure oh, right here. I'm gonna use the opposite side from what I used for the vinegar so I don't get vinegar in here. And that's garlic powder, one teaspoon of that. And then a half teaspoon of onion powder. This is really just an operation in mixing some stuff up, guys. It's not complicated. There you go, half teaspoon of onion powder. Then we will do a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. My mom puts so much pepper on stuff, it's ridiculous. She was over the other day and she accidentally opened this thing, the, that one, the spoon one, and poured it on her food and her food just was like caked in pepper. She was still eating it. She can eat an outlandish amount of pepper, it's crazy. And then we need a quarter teaspoon of salt in there as well. And then we're gonna mix that up. And this is gonna be our glaze. Like I said, we're gonna brush this over the top of the meatloaf. Uh, once it's done cooking for 40 minutes. I'm just combining it now so that I'm ready. And then I'll get it all integrated here, all mixed up so everything is even. And then I'll put a little, I don't know, saran wrap on it, I guess, and put it in the fridge and we'll pull it back out when it's time to use it. <laughs> I'm the guy who ruins the saran wrap. I don't know, it's all messed up, guys. It's all messed up. Wait, hold on, I think I've got it. That might have set me free. Ha <laughs> ha, check it out. Are we good? It's still stuck? Okay. Derp. <laughs> I got it. All right, so we'll, we'll wrap this up just so nothing flies into it. We'll put it in the fridge and we'll come get it as soon as the meatloaf's ready for us to top. Hey guys, I'm back. So the meatloaf has been cooking, hear the beep, for 40 minutes. Let's pull it out and take a look. All right, it looks like a giant loaf of meat if you ask me. It's interesting, there's like a liquid down there. I guess that's the grease from the meat. I've never actually made a full meatloaf like this. You'll remember we made that glaze and put it in the fridge, so I just pulled that out. And I am gonna go ahead and check the temp, because technically this is done at 160 degrees. It looks like we're only at 95 degrees internal, so we got a ways to go. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna take that glaze and we're gonna put it over it, like so. And we're at 100 degrees. So yeah, we got quite a while to go here on this meatloaf. My camera, my close-up camera battery is dead, but that's okay. I'm just gonna glaze this meatloaf really quick, and then we're gonna put it back in the oven, still at 300 whatever degrees. We're gonna save this, because I think we need this again in a minute. All right, let's put it back in for another 20 minutes, and we'll be back. Okay, everyone, we're back. It has been like an hour and 20 minutes. That's how long it took to get this thing up to temperature. Now I did 40 minutes and then I put it, the glaze on and then I did 40 more minutes with the glaze and now it's finally 160 degrees internal according to my thermometer, 167. So some spots are different temperatures than others. We have a ton of juice here and I was reading through the recipe. It says you can use the juice as like a gravy sort of for this. So you can actually put that on there. We also have extra glaze that you could use to put on the meatloaf. So let me take it out of the pan and let's take a look at it. I'm hoping this thing has enough structural integrity so that I can just like pull the whole thing out. Look at that. Voila. And there's all your juices in there that we can use as a gravy. It's honestly a little bit disturbing looking, <laughs> especially the sides here. It just looks kind of weird, but you know, it's, it's going to be the world's best meatloaf. I feel like you could actually take this um, au jus. I'm over here on the wrong side of the camera now as I'm looking at it and I'm just like, you know, you could take this glaze and just apply it to the side, although it doesn't really seem to be sticking. But I think that would make it a little bit better. No such thing as too much flavor walking around this meatloaf. All right, it looks pretty good. Let me take a picture. I'm gonna cut a slice off this giant thing of meatloaf. Basically just a giant meat patty and we're gonna try it and see if it really is the world's best meatloaf. Meatloaf is not my favorite food by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but 
you know, I've had it plenty of times. So we'll see what I think. Take a little bit. Here we go. World's best meatloaf. Look at that steam. It's gonna burn me. Down the hatch. Hmm, let me try this piece. I'm gonna try some of that little gravy on there. All right, I got a little of the juice and I'm just gonna pour it on there. Cause that was a recommendation was to pour a little of the juice on there. And we'll try it now with a little bit of that juiciness. Hmm, the juice kind of, uh, I don't know if I like the juice. Okay, so this is a good meatloaf. It's a very good meatloaf. Um, world's best? I don't know. I have not eaten enough meatloafs to maybe say. I would say it's uh, one of the better meatloafs I've ever had. I'd probably give it like an eight out of 10. Part of that's coming down to the fact that I'm not a huge meatloaf fan. I've just always found it a little too meat forward. Um, it's very delicious, it's juicy, the flavors are really good, but it is still just a huge pile of meat and I feel like I should cook up some like, uh, some rolls or something to go with it. Actually, I did buy some rolls, maybe I'll do that. Yeah, this is what we're missing, like some rolls on the side. And I think this is gonna be a good meal, pretty delicious. Uh, we have made the world's best meatloaf, according to Google. If you enjoyed this, guys, make sure you subscribe, check out my other world's best videos, and we'll see you next time.